Archplan XP is a design software for architects and interior designers. It's a BIM system. Uh, let me show you uh, first uh, what we think, uh, why it's, it could be important for uh, architects and interior designers to use a BIM software. Now, let's uh, clear, let's make it clear what is a BIM. Um, most things, uh, the, the most important is that it's, it's, a, it's building information modeling and it's the emphasis is on, on the information itself. So when you use a BIM software, you, don't, you do not only use um, a single 2D CAD or a 3D modeler or something like that, but you design the structure itself and you can actually uh, create the virtual version of the real life existing item whether it could be a wall or any other building structure so you actually create the building itself it's a workflow and a collaboration makes it easier to collaborate with other uh, parties of the building industry and also other professionals it's actually uh, covering the whole building life cycle uh, from the construction to the final demolition and covering everything from facility management operation and of course the design process as well. Uh, let's make it clear what is not a BIM. BIM is not only one single software and it's not even 3D CAD. Uh, I can understand why um, it could be confusing to uh, feel like it's 3D CAD, but it's, indeed you will design something that exists in 3D, but the emphasis is not in, on this, in its 3D existence, it's actually uh, the information in it, and it's a lot more than just a 3D representation of the item, I will show that later. It's not only for construction um, and it's not only for big companies. I will also demonstrate it with a smaller project that you can use, you can take your advantage and you can, you can uh, use uh, already uh, the BIM um, information in your uh, average size models as well. Why would anyone need um, a BIM software? Or why would anyone need uh, BIM at all? Uh, I think one of the most important thing is that uh, if you are not working in a BIM system, uh, you will have less chance to communicate with others or even if you can communicate with others, uh, the quality of the communication could be slightly different from what you can do with a BIM software. With BIM you can actually give the building itself to the, to the other party. Uh, with all the details in it as you designed and then they can extract data as as much as they want as uh, they don't have to deal with things that they uh, do not care about and they can focus on the things that uh, that they are interested in um, there is already a large amount of data available uh, online that you can just ready uh, just just go there and download and use it as it is and also, uh, as I mentioned, the uh, communication with co-designers and other professionals will be, uh, I think, uh, a lot more easier. Uh, how a BIM adoption process looks like, I prepared three steps. Uh, first things first, you need to choose the right product. It's, uh, it could be um, something that you did not see before so it takes time for the company to risk time and money uh, with the search and test these things uh, see if they work for them or not uh, so this is the first uh, step to, to, to try to find uh, what is the best solution what is the best uh, software for you uh, to work in the BIM environment um, also Another important issue is that you need to lay down the IT requirements, uh, which means um, you think you could you should upgrade your computers or at least uh, check if they worth uh, using for the BIM software. And sometimes people think that uh, also BIM software uh, need uh, high system requirements. Uh, which is of course true for uh, especially large files but not necessarily true for the BIM workflow itself. And about the budgeting, um, if you would like to uh, finance a BIM software, you would like to have something that is easy to, to budget, easy to understand and easy to maintain. Uh, perhaps you don't want something that is coming with uh, no perpetual solution. And um, of course you will think about the training needs 
um, of yourself or your employees who you would like to um, uh, assign to this uh, project, we would like to assign to the BIM design. So what could be the problems with the BIM adoption? As I mentioned, uh, it could be a long time to fully adopt and um, at the beginning perhaps you cannot see if it's transparent enough and uh, uh, what you should expect, uh, how um, profitable it will be, uh, how you will um, work with it. Also, uh, you can see that software needs uh, money, so you, you need to invest some money to buy new software and perhaps new um, IT um, stuff like um, computers and uh, hardware and things like that. And also, you need to finance the training itself, uh, which could be long and expensive, uh, at least at the beginning everyone thinks that. And also, um, you need to train your uh, co-workers as well if you would like to work together, if you would like to collaborate with, with uh, others in your company. Um, so what, can, what Archline can offer in this field? First things first, uh, Archline is uh, designed to be easy to use and because it's, it's a standard design software, it builds upon uh, a knowledge that you already know. So you don't have to learn everything from sketch because when you start working with Archline, you will find similar um, items, you will find civil, similar ideologies which you already used in other design systems, like for example, the layer structure, how you, you, you design a certain uh, wall or a roof or something like that. So these are easy to learn uh, on top of what you already know. It also contains every tool. It is designed to be an, an everything in one, uh, all in one software, and so that you don't need extra plugins. Or even if you can obtain new plugins for Archline, they are uh, free, uh, which you can easily download from the website. It connects to multiple uh, websites also directly, so you can download items from their uh, libraries. Archline also has moderate system requirements, so if you do not work on, on large projects, uh, then you do not have to have uh, a very powerful PC. But of course, if you will work on, on more complex um, drawings, more complex buildings, then the system requirements grow. But basically, Archline runs on a, a very moderate system as well. We also offer uh, perpetual licenses uh, or um, subscriptions as well. It is an easy uh, to understand uh, system which you can check online and you can buy the software and then you can, you're free to use uh, your license. And Archline uh, is also a certified BIM software which is uh, one of the most important points. Uh, we've got the certification for export and in import in, uh, in the IFC uh, file format. So let me, let me summarize the benefits uh, of Archline. Uh, as Archline is the, uh, the gateway to BIM, it is your, um, your BIM software uh, and with intuitive tools and with an easy to, uh, to learn interface and easy to use commands. Uh, which uh, as you try the trial or you already have the software itself, uh, you will understand uh, easily. Also, uh, it offers a, a smooth transition from your perhaps already existing 2D drafting uh, skills or 3D modeling skills to the complete BIM uh, workflow. We also have a lot of tutorials like this online and you can uh, watch them and rewatch them and just study and go along with the steps we mentioned in the videos. BIM uh, is within a budget with Archline. Um, as you can check online, we have very affordable perpetual licenses uh, with all the, need, uh, all the, all the features uh, that you might need for your design. Um, we also offer great collaboration, uh, not just to BIM libraries, but uh, Archline is also designed to be very open uh, in import and export, so you can find several file formats that you can uh, work with uh, in Archline, not only, uh, not just uh, with its own own uh, file format. And as I mentioned, every function is in one software bundle. 
So this is about the uh, benefits of ArchLine and this is how we see uh, the, the, the BIM um, design ecology and how you can fit into that ecology. Let me show you how it works in practice. Archline XP's interface is a classic uh, Windows interface with main menu from file to help uh, with all the commands that you might need for your des design process. It also comes with a classic toolbars and at the left hand side you can find the toolbox with all the commands from uh, different nodes like building to through interior to till the documentation part. You can also find a status bar at the bottom and the biggest area on your screen is the work area. Now, if you would like to work with a project in Archline, you can either start from scratch or you can simply uh, load an existing file and work uh, based on that file. Now, let me show you first how you can uh, use an existing um, CAD drawing, like for example, a DWG file. Please just, uh, in that case, go to the file and import and you will find the most important file formats already listed here from DWG, 3DS, uh, SketchUp, IFC, Revit and uh, 3D Warehouse and also you can import uh, PDFs and, and raster images and if you cannot find something here please just go to the uh, import command and here you can use the filter to find uh, the other file formats as well. Now I am going with a DWG file, so I just click there and I select this DWG file, which is actually a ground floor plan of an existing building. So I will click on open to open it and I can also uh, just simply merge it to the existing drawing so it won't open in a new window. So I click open and then I set up the scaling. So if you click OK, the software loads this uh, drawing and you can work on top of that drawing. And the uh, most things uh, important at the beginning, you should check if the size is correct. Because uh, sometimes uh, you need to rescale the content of the DWG uh, file as you never know from where it came and what was the original uh, unit in that DWG file. So I always recommend the first test if everything is in the proper size. You just click on one endpoint and the other endpoint of that uh, wall, for example, and check if that cor correlates with the uh, with the original length. So let's just close this. This is correct. So I can start working with it. What I will do, I will use the wall and walls and DWG command this time because this allows me to pick one endpoint and the other endpoint of this wall and then the thickness and then it automatically turns into a 3D wall. Let me just zoom out a little bit so I can show you the rest when they come up uh, as I draft uh, along these lines. So I just keep uh, using this walls on DWG drawing and I just click on one endpoint, the other endpoint and the thickness and this is what I repeat. If the software uh, for any reason it's not recognizing the full length of the wall, don't worry. All you need is a wall that is at least um, following a part of that line that you have on the drawing and all the rest you can sort out later by just simply connecting these uh, walls together uh, either on the 2D or in the 3D as well. So what I'm doing, I'm just simply trying to keep track of all the walls that I can find. Also the partition walls, I will do the same. And then I just uh, clear up the connection. So now I'm going back to the 3D. I use the L connection and I connect these two, these two, and these two, and perhaps these and these here. So now I'm done with the wall connections. Now as I have the walls here, I go back to the 2D and I will show you how to track a window first. You can use the window by two points command. You just click on one endpoint of the existing drawing uh, and the other endpoint of the ex existing window on this drawing. And when it's, once you are done, the window will appear in the 3D and of course in the 2D as well. And you can make adjustments to better fit the original drawing. The same thing you can do with the door command there is one called door by two points you just click on one endpoint the other endpoint and you just set up the opening direction simply moving your mouse and when you click the opening direction is set so now you have walls you have windows and doors and this is how to trace uh, DWG drawing quickly 
If you would like to work on, uh, on your project from scratch, you only need to open a new project and start working with the walls, the doors, windows and other building parts. Now I already have a building here which I would like to create so I just simply start using the single wall tool I pick the first point of the wall and then I move my mouse. I can either um, visually design these things so I just graphically click wherever I wish or I can also type the distance but before I do let me show you that, that now uh, I have this wall thickness coming to the left side of the blue reference line and this is not what I want I would like to make it to the right side of the wall so I just click on the right side command at the right right hand side and then as you can see now the wall thickness comes to the right side of this blue reference line and it is because I would like to track this building with its uh, external contour. So the first value I'm about to use is this. I just type the value. I, you do not have to click here uh, anywhere. You just type the value and then hit enter and the software understands. And now I'm working in millimeters. So the software understands that this is the length of the wall. When I track the second wall, I just move my mouse to the uh, other direction and I type the distance, which is this in this case. And I keep going on. Uh, now let me just focus in the 3D. I just click there, zoom out and rotate the model a little bit. So you will see uh, all the changes that I uh, will make when tracking the contour of this building. So let's just go back to the 2D and continue using the wall tool. This is single wall. Again, I just click here and I type the distance, which in this case should be near uh, one and a half meter. The following one is about 3800 the next one is uh, a little bit more than uh, two meters and this third one is a bit longer and this third one is a bit longer and then let's just go on and draw the final wall at this end and finally, if you just move your mouse to the desired direction and keep holding the shift key on your keyboard, you can lock the direction and you can just match an existing point of your drawing. And this is how you can finish the, the contour. Uh, you can also connect these two walls using the L connection. And then if you, we say we are done, then we just go on and keep creating the, the partition walls. Also, you can add extensions like this here. You can use this this command which allows you to uh, set up a width and a depth for this uh, wall addition if you do that you can change those you can click OK and then you can move your mouse and as you can see there is an orange reference line and um, the distance between the uh, orange reference line and uh, and the end point of the wall on that same side can be determined easily you just type that value in my case it is, it is 2300 and then I hit enter and now I have this addition so you can uh, change the contour later on as well. If I'm about to change the thickness of these walls because I did not set them uh, up uh, previously uh, I have several options though, but the most easy the most uh, simple way is to select the whole content and say that the thickness is now different it should be 440 uh, instead of the original thickness and then I'm about to create the partition wall inside you can also set up different colors or different textures for the different sides of this wall you can go to the properties these are the the quick properties this is the, the property grid it does not show you all the properties but only the most important properties if you would like to go to find all the properties of the wall you will use this little uh, pencil here which is the modify icon so here you can go and find other uh, settings as well and of course the other materials you just go to the libraries and if you click on home you will find all the textual libraries we have built in of course the software comes with built-in uh, material libraries and also objects profiles and every other content and if you would like to extend these libraries you are free, free to do so Archline is very much open and it allows you to create all this content on your own as well 
So now I'm about to add something uh, which I know we have in these libraries. These are the um, bricks here. So I just select this brick material and I would like to change the material of this wall. If I zoom in, you can find that material appearing. Now, what if I would like to copy these properties all over to the other walls? In that case, I only um, select the original, the prototype of this um, of this wall, and then I use the copy properties command, and then now I would like to copy all properties to the other walls, so I just hit OK, and then I select uh, the full content, and I hit Enter, so now it's done. Now, let's create partition walls. First, I will create a... Uh, 300 millimeters wide wall so I just right click here and I set up the property so before I start creating again uh, a wall with this thickness I can go in and I can change the thickness and I also change the material I will use something white I believe so I just search for white and I go with this bright white for example I can change all the other com uh, mm, properties as well of course with the layers the line types and so on so if I go okay I can just uh, start creating a 300 millimeters wide wall and this is what I will do again I will change the reference line to be on the left hand side so as you can see now it is much better I can just click here and later I will deal with this connection I will clear it up but first let me just create um, the partition walls they are also white and they have they share the same properties except the wall uh, thickness and talking about the beam software I did not mention yet but you can find the beam parameters for each and every type it's here you can also add other details like other door and window and wall and other items beam properties uh, not just only the existing geometry you can change but you can change all these as well and these will live with the project so if you export in an IFC file and the software will export all the beam parameters together with the geometry as well so let's go back here let's just create uh, properties of this partition wall this is how it goes and let me quickly create a single wall here another single wall here again I need to change the reference line to be on the on the other side let's just go on and continue working with this like let's say I'm not that particularly curious about the size of this wall now so I just simply closed it and later I will set up the distance between these things I can also design something here referring to the original wall corner and this is how it goes so I just click on these wall connections to clear this up and then I use the T connection to connect these walls into the original walls and of course this here as well and what happens if I would like to change the distance later I can click on the wall and I can use the move command or I can click on this wall and use the control key and click on the other wall as well to change the distance now if I would change the distance this wall would move because the, di uh, the indicator arrow indicates this direction so I just click here and I would like to change this distance to something that I already have on my original drawing this should be uh, a different value I just type the distance and I hit enter and now it changed I can do the same with all the rest here I can just click here and say this is something like 2100 and like that so I just refine the details and then once I'm done I just save the project and I continue go on working with the doors windows and the slabs let me quickly create a few doors and windows in this project and you will see how these work. Uh, if you right click on the command before you start placing anything you can go to the properties and you can find the details of the doors and windows and the same goes for all the other items. So you can predefine the settings that you will work with. Here if you click on this button you can find the doors in this single indoor library but if you go to the home you will find other doors in the indoor industrial and outdoor library you can find folding doors single doors and also you can find sliding doors that you can use for your project 
Now I will go with this simple one and I just hit OK and I create a few of them. This time I will use the door drag and drop because it's very simple. I just click on a point on the drawing, set up the opening direction and then I continue going with the others. Let's just place a few here and uh, like there and also if I know the distance between this corner point and the reference point that I'm grabbing I just simply type the distance let's say it's half a meter so it's there I'll set up the opening direction and let's just do the same here and let's just do the same for example here and here now if I have something that is common uh, in in the properties of the of the doors and I would like to change them I can do the same what I did in case of the walls I just select these and for example now I will change the distance from wall line uh, which is now in my case it's zero so they these walls will fall back into the partition wall so I just hit zero and enter and now everything is correct also you can change the position of these doors later so you can click on any of these values and change it the way you want also you can change their size you just click on the width of the door and just retype to something else and also you can turn these walls into openings for that you need to go to the properties of these walls and turn this option on so from that point on this door is not not a door with a with a panel in it but it's only the opening so you, I, let's just make me uh, make it larger like like this here so this is how it goes this is how you can track uh, doors and how to how you can place doors and uh, other items like that in the walls and the same goes for the windows you can also predefine the settings of the window and then you just keep going and setting up the positions of the windows either graphically or you can type distance also if you need you can set up a different uh, reference point in that case you just move your mouse here and click on next reference point and now I'm placing this window with its center point this is how it works in case of windows now let me create a slab here to cover uh, the bottom of this building now if you use the slab tool again after setting up the properties you can go with the slab in sketch mode to quick track the contours of this building but if actually you would like to follow the, uh, the building contours you have an even faster option it's the slab by walls you only need to select the whole uh, drawing itself and then you hit enter and you will have a slab under your building so let me just turn it around this is what I've got and you can also of course customize that so let me just quickly create something like this terrace here I'm just moving the corner points I remove corner points and I can also also um, use the offset command to um, parallelly uh, offset the whole, whole contour uh, of that side of this slab to finish this and to go on to the next part I will just quickly create a decoration on this slab you can in in case of each and every item if you click on it in this floating menu this is how we call it in this floating menu you can find the context menu or the local menu which offers all the tools that you can do with this specific item and this comes with tiling here for example so if I use the tiling on floor and I change the reference line to somewhere else because now it's easier to place with its right bottom corner point then I can decorate this area or this area or, the, or whichever I would like to I can use the background area and track it manually or I can use the point of profile to click there and set up a different color now I will keep it simple I just use a gray material so I just type gray here and I find something like this I like that so it's as you can see it is painted on the 2d and in the 3d as well uh, this sort of background area can be used for colors carpets and everything else like that also for textures or also you can use the add tiles function to tile that surface again here you can find the libraries of the software and you can search for existing materials or you can download uh, other fabrics or, or textures and you can extend the libraries and once you uh, did set up the tile width and other properties like the thickness and the tile grout size then you can say OK and you can decide from which starting point you would like to start uh, the tiling. Now I will pick this point. You can set up the uh, direction of the of the grouts and uh, I just click there. So now the full surface is tiled. And most importantly, 
uh, it is not just a texture appearing on the surface but these are real 3d tiles which at the end will give me the benefit uh, that the software knows exactly how many pieces of these this specific tile is needed to cover the surfaces of this um, this area and also my whole project and I can uh, sort it out I can uh, make make a, a file a list uh, out of it in an Excel file at the end this is a multi-story building so I need to create other floors uh, in this building I can do that using this ground floor button here this uh, building only has a ground floor so I click there and I can either rename this floor to I don't know for example floor one uh, or I can manage the uh, the other details and I can add other levels up and down be up uh, above and below this already existing structure let me just rename the rest of these levels this will be a roof floor and then when I hit OK, I can navigate uh, through these levels using the up and down arrow to find the one that I'm working on. Now, I would like to copy all these content, so I select it and I click here, the copy objects to other floors, and I click here and I find the floor where I would like to make copies of these selected items. And when I say OK, the software will create the second level of this building. Here I will, uh, for example, change the texture of this uh, external contours, uh, external walls. So uh, I could, again, do that in the same way I did before. I just change the material of one wall and then copy the properties. But I also would like to show you another way. Uh, you can also select items, walls, for example, by, by their thicknesses. You just click here, uh, by properties, and you just select all walls. Uh, sharing the same wall width uh, as with a value 440 and when you are done you can just go back here find the material that you would like to change and find the new material that you would like to apply and then when you hit OK the software will change that here also you can customize other parts of this uh, first uh, second floor removing parts and adding other details that you would like to let's see how to create stairs uh, if you would like to create a stair you need to find a proper floor where you would like to start the stair from uh, I will also adjust the door uh, on this level a little bit so it will be much better fitting to my purpose so uh, here I would like to create a staircase so I will use the stair tool and the predefined stair there are other other stair tools but now I will use the predefined stair because it allows me to select uh, from a library of uh, staircases and I will go with this one so I hit OK I will start the, the staircase from this point of my drawing so I just click on the corner points and in this specific case it is wider than what I expect to have but it's not a problem I can change it later so I just click here set up the stair and then I select it and go to the details to further customize it first things first I would like to uh, change its height this should be 3000 millimeters <coughs> So when I do something, uh, when I change something here, uh, I need to wait a little bit and the software will recalculate the values. And if I, I see something highlighted with red, this means uh, based on these values, perhaps this stair would not be that ergonomic. Uh, but even though uh, it happens, I could say OK and create the staircase. It's not a problem for the software. So uh, let's just set up all the rest, all the details and go to the step geometry I would like to change the staircase uh, width so I just use another value I type it and wait and then it recalculates it also I would like to change this uh, length here which is this value but if I would like to type it here I cannot now because it is locked it is locked because this is how I designed it but if I enable for editing then I can click here and I can change this value to something else this is the current uh, width of my uh, drawing uh, part here so I just type another value and when I'm done I just simply hit OK and the staircase is automatically created now to be able to climb this stair I also need to have 
um, handrail so I just click on the stair I find the balustrade settings uh, this is for the railing you can set up a different styles or you can also set up a detailed um, setting for the um, for the handrails but now I will just go with the with the with the built-in um, steel profile uh, style so I just hit OK and the software automatically generates this uh, on top of the stair now in 3d we you can see a problem that the handrail the railing is already sticking out but I cannot come upstairs uh, because there is no hole uh, on the ground uh, on this floor level so to be able to solve that I just go here select the staircase and I can go with this local menu and use the cut slabs above the stair so it will create a minimal uh, cut above it and then also I can further customize it I can zoom in I can just simply uh, click on this edge of the counter and I can just simply change it uh, to another part uh, so it better fits uh, the purpose of my design and also if I don't like uh, the shape I can change it and I can also the same way I can also customize this handrail so what I will do for example I just select it I go to the properties and then so I just select it I just select it I go to the properties and I change uh, the distance between the balusters for example I just change it to 140 for example to make it even more dense and let's just go back and make changes here because for example here I don't want to have a break line and also here I would like to remove the break line and the rest also I would like to remove these were automatically generated but I can easily remove them and the software will adjust the handrail to the current design I have detailed this project. I have finished all the walls, the partition walls, doors, windows. I also added uh, columns here using the column tool. Uh, I also uh, made changes for the texture and I created the, this top level for the roof, uh, which I will demonstrate soon. So now I can create the roof, the flat roof here, and I can also add, up, add some handrail. Let's start with the handrail. I just go to the first floor I just use this jump list that you can uh, first things first you can use these um, up and down buttons but you can also use the jump list to quick jump to the first floor and then when you go to the balustrade and use this tool because now it's not on a stair so you just use this tool then you can just simply click on the end points uh, at the design where you would like to see this there uh, this balustrade and when you hit enter and enter again the software will create it so let's just change it here as well I do the same I just click enter enter and then the software creates it so if you would like to uh, detail this uh, you can go and change the settings you can even create your own style uh, now I will show you only one simple example you just click on the uh, 3d handrail uh, or the 3d railing and you just click on this this little icon with that you can edit this segment of this item and you can uh, change the balusters uh, on the first part the first post the second post and in between if I just simply disable this it will much better fit uh, the rest of the design so I just hit OK and I can do the same here I just zoom in a little bit and to find this uh, this this item and go to the properties and disable this setting here and say OK. So this is how it goes. Um, for, for, for now it's enough. Uh, let's go to the uh, flat roof part. It, it will be here. So I just go to the roof level and I will design it. So I just go back to the top roof level and I start drawing here. Uh, now I cannot see the other part of the drawing, the, um, the one that exists on the uh, second floor. So I need to open up this list and just change the visibility of that floor and then click on the drawing, then I can see it in grey. So now I can use the slab tool, uh, for example the slabbing sketch mode now, because I cannot select those, they are not on this, this level, I'm just simply uh, tracking this uh, manually here for example I just zoom in to find this spot here and then once I'm done I just hit enter the software close uh, closes the loop and now I have um, 
something like that. I can change the contour in the 2D and I can change the contour in the 3D. I can click on the contour and say offset all, for example, with a certain uh, thickness or certain width. Or I can just simply do that graphically and then adjust it graphically uh, by clicking on existing uh, points of the design like this. I also would like to move back a little bit and this I would like to use an offset and match it with the original contour of this uh, wall. Uh, to decorate surfaces like this you can use the molding tool. You can find it here and let me just enlarge the 3D. So you can find it here. Uh, it is called molding and you can use the molding in sketch mode for example so that you can select this surface and track the contour points the edges of this slab and once you once you hit enter the software will use this path that you design and adjust a cross-section profile to that this is like a sweep it's like a molding it's a it's a it's a 3d decoration profile you can go to the properties of it and you can either change the cross-section you can also design your own cross-section or you can go to the libraries of the software to find other cross-sections you can also just simply change the reference point the alignment point of this uh, item you can also change its sides let's just change it to something else like I think like this just something smaller will be much better and you can also change the uh, material uh, to 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 use on this surface I will go with something gray I will use that and I say okay so now it's now it's decorated I just do the same thing with the top surface of this slab I just select it and I go to the disabling to the same materials options and I will change the top material from this white material to the same gray that I used uh, for the molding for example and now it's done. I can also further detail it but now let's go and work with the uh, top roof. The roof tool uh, has many options and it is actually quite a detailed uh, tool in the software. Uh, let me show you the concept first. For that I will just go back one floor and I will open up the building roof and auto roof. I, this is what I will use. As you can see, there are many other tools here. I will use the auto roof now to uh, demonstrate how it works. You can select the walls or you can draft the contour. And based on that contour, which is the external contour of these walls, the software will automatically draft, automatically create a roof with the, with the detail structure as you set it here. You can enable eaves, purlins, middle purlins, rafters, color beams, ridge boards and buttons and all the rest uh, is here which which I will show you uh, but not on this roof because actually this is not what I want to create I would like to have only one pitched plane and I just hit cancel and I go to the roof floor so this is the part that I would like to cover with only one single pitch plane so for that again I can use the single roof plane command but now I would like to show you something with the roof with the auto roof tool so I will go with this one I can again select these uh, here to create a roof on top of those or you can also man manually draft it by using the rectangle tool for example and once you're done again the software creates it. You can set up the height, the, 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 the base offset of this roof from the, from the floor. Uh, many times, as I'm an architect, I use the C or the external values, uh, which it's this, for example, here is the lowest point of this um, roof. Uh, but other times when I'm working with interior design um, issues, uh, I'm working on interior design projects, I use the F value likely. So I just click here. Uh, to change the F value and I think it, this is will be this will be something like half a meter in this case and I just click update so it jumps down with which we will see soon in the 3d also I could use an even smaller value so it it, it moves uh, further back down but this will make sense once we have the uh, have it appearing in the 3d so now if I go and set up the properties of the rafters and all the other parts I finally go to the uh, layers in geometry to set up the layers if I want to represent some and I can also go to the pitch and shape page where I can set up changes and, and uh, uh, slope angles for these uh, planes. First things first if I click here and I change the slope of this saying that this is only 
30 degrees for example I click update so the software will change it or I can also turn this into a cable and update and see what happens I can do the same thing here turn it into a gable end and actually if I turn this into a gable end I can also make only one single roof plane and then if I click here and I change the pitch of this roof plane I click update and the software will, will generate a different roof and I click OK and then it appears in the 3D let me highlight how it looks like this is this is absolutely normal at this phase of this project because I did not uh, instructed the software to cut the walls. Um, now, if I would like to do that, I just need to update the model by simply clicking here and just click here, and the software will update the model with the cut uh, options enabled. Okay, uh, let me just cover this part as well. And again, for this, I need to see the floor below me, so I go just open this up enable the visibility of the first floor this is how it looks like and then I click here click on the counter I can insert a node here another node here let me just zoom in to find the best spot this one and then I will just use the offset tool to manually offset this here so I click where I would like to place it and I do the rest on the other edges I can also add some details and to rebuild the 3D I just hit this button and now I have got this here. This is how the building looks like now. Now that the model is done let's go and add some details, uh, measurements, um, texts around it and also I would like to measure the rooms. Here on the ground floor I will use the uh, dimension tool and I can also use the walls or also the serial dimensions or uh, as you can see there are many tools here. I can use the walls now and uh, I will select some of the possibilities, add them here in a proper order and when I say OK then I can just simply select one wall and place the dimension and select another wall, place the dimension and select the third wall, select and place the dimension. So this is how I can go with this tool. It measures every detail automatically. Or I can go even faster by simply selecting the all walls tool and do the same thing here and select the full layout here, hit enter and then set up the first uh, um, position of the dimensions and then when I click the software will automatically create all the rest of the dimensions ev everywhere around in this drawing. The good point uh, here is that all these uh, doors and windows and everything that is measured already if they change their position like I do some change here let me just move it to somewhere else uh, let's just reduce the distance here as you can see the not just the design but also the uh, measurements will also follow the changes this is how it works with these uh, dimension tools also if I would like to measure the rooms I just use the building and room and area I use the room by walls because that will automatically detect the walls of that room and then I can click there to place the room text this here and the other one and after I already have these I just zoom into one to see how it can be customized you just zoom into the details and change for example the room name let's say this is a kitchen and I will also change the floor finish by simply selecting ceramic tile I can also type something here and the rest is automatically measured based on the contour of this room. So this is how you can add dimensions and room details into your project. Creating a section out of the Archline XP BIM model is quite simple. You only need to select the define section tool either from here or from the documentation uh, part of the left hand side toolbox and you can just simply start setting up the uh, settings. I do not make ch many changes here, I just would like to see hatches and I would like to see the objects now because my chimney is an object 
and then I could click OK and then I can start drafting uh, what I wish. So here I click first to set up the first point of this um, of this section line and then I move to the other end of this building and set up the end point of this section line for example here and then I can move my mouse to find the best spot from where I would like to look at this uh, section for example from here I click and then I say yes to create the section. The section is a dynamic drawing which means if I organize I can show it better which means uh, that if I change the position for example of this section line or I break this section line this section will automatically uh, follow that change so I just select this section line I add a node for example into this part and I click on offset to place it somewhere in, in the center of the corridor and as you can see now I do not intersect this door but once I hit enter and I say yes to update now I also intersect the door itself here on the on the 3d section as well so let's just repeat that again I just add another a second section I just set up the section line for example here I set up the view direction I say yes and then I organize it to fall back to the other drawings and in, in this list and if I change something because I don't like this position but I'd like to choose another one which fits better and I hit enter yes and it's automatically updated so this is how you can create sections now the sections are not that much detailed because I'm working on a conceptual uh, design I did not create the layers but that's also possible uh, we, uh, we are not covering that in this tutorial now uh, but I would like to show you how to create elevation drawings so to create an elevation you can go to the views uh, of this 3d view for example and you can actually set up a specific view uh, using these commands here these are the specific representations of the model this is still an image representation that's, that's how we call it and it's because it's the model itself you can still rotate it but if you would like to turn it into a uh, vector drawing, vector graphics, then you do the same. You just set up the view and then you go to the to the menu of this um, window of this 3D content and you click on the image to vector graphics and backwards command and then it will turn it into a, a, a drawing which you can then customize to look uh, as a hidden line remover drawing or colored or even hatched <coughs> Or also you can add uh, shading or shadows uh, by using this command here you just click here on the shadows command and set up the hatches uh, set up the shading representation and set up how the light is reflected how the, how the light is represented and once you click OK the software will automatically generate a content like this here this is again a 3D content, which means this is the window, that is the roof, that is that is the old parts are the original items. So if I would like to change them, I can change them on the original drawing and it will be reflected on the section and in the uh, 3D view as well. But as I would like to turn it into a, a plain 2D drawing, uh, I can select it and use Ctrl C to copy and set up a point to pick this drawing up. I do it because I would like to collect these drawings in the new 2D window. I will call this 2D elevations and I hit enter to control V paste my content here and then I can repeat this step with the with another view. I just click here. I set up a right view for example and the software calculates another view and I detach this view from here uh, as a drawing I just select it control C selecting an endpoint moving to the other drawing control V paste and then just simply paste it uh, uh, where I want on this drawing I would like to show you uh, a few other tools how you can measure things how you can place dimensions and other uh, texts here around so I will use the dimension tools there is a serial in horizontal 
dimension, which is, I think, quite useful for not just only for the 2D uh, floor plans, but also for the elevations and the sections. Uh, it only needs two points that you select and it will measure the distance. And then you only need to click on the following points and the software will automatically measure their distance and align it to the same uh, dimension line. You can also find this command with a vertical option and also you can ha use all the other tools to measure the pitch of the roof and other things like that. I would like to highlight one another tool which is the elevation on section. With this one you can pick the zero point, you can tell the software that's the zero and I also would like to measure zero so I click again there, I place the zero here and then I only click on the, on the following points that I would like to measure uh, for example the top of the chimney as well and once I'm done I have the measurement here I have the measurement here I can repeat these steps and do the, do the rest around the building let's just place um, a text for example a title I will use the drafting text placing a text and I will name it I think this will be for example the west elevation okay I paste it uh, perhaps below the drawing and I hit cancel because I would like to change this uh, text here I think it's too small so I just change its size I click on the move icon move and with the shift button holding down I just uh, align it to the center of the drawing and then again I click here move a copy and I will move that copy aligning to the center of the other drawing and then I click here inside to change it to I don't know for example south elevation so this is how you can go on and uh, keep uh, on using the text tool the dimension tools and finish the documentation uh, for the floor levels for the elevations and for the sections If you would like to print any of your drawings, you have several options. Uh, first things first, you can select the drawing that I have done with this floor plan. I, this is the highlighted drawing, so this is the active drawing. So I made it active and then I can go to the file and use my printer, create a PDF file or I, I can also set up a print job which collects mult multiple pages that I prepare and I can print uh, multiple pages to the printer or you create a multi-page um, PDF as well. Uh, this is the simplest way of uh, printing a content but also sometimes you may want to create a plot layout uh, and you would like to collect several drawings from your project to one single layout and in that case you need to use the documentation and prepare plot layout tool. With this one you can prepare a page in a certain size you can set up its orientation you can even select a predefined uh, plot stamp or title box which we uh, which we already did here you can also create them these are actually regular 2d groups which you can design with lines text and save as save them as a, a specific group in your library so if you do that you just click OK and the software will create the layout of this A3 paper in this specific case and you can hit OK and you can fill up the details of this um, of this title box for example. As this is a BIM project and I already filled up the BIM parameters in the file menu, file BIM, BIM parameters, I can also already update the project parameters. It, they appear here and I can say OK and they are already filled here but any other way will also do so you can actually manually put the text here as well if you want or you can use your own title boxes that you created earlier now if you would like to fill up the layout with, with drawing content you can use the design center project navigator from here you can drag and drop this drawing onto the white layout and you can set up a certain scaling and you can paste it for example here and then you can do the same with the first floor and the roof floor and all the rest so you can just place them there and you will have a plot layout prepared and then you can print this out 
If you would like to create another plot layout next to this one, to the right side, you will again go to the documentation, prepare plot layout, set up the details and then drag and drop drawings again. Let me uh, show you two things before I go on. Uh, first thing is that what happens if this is not active? If this is not active for any reason and you use the documentation prepare plot layout it will generate a new layout with a single in a, in a single new window so if you would like to place it here make sure it is active and then use documentation prepare plot layout this is a good advice for first and the second one is that if you would like to um, print this out uh, you need to take care of the scaling and just before we go on, one another thing, what happens if the uh, project manager disappears? Don't worry, just go to the design center and use the project manager. And if, if you cannot see the project navigator, it's perhaps because you are at the starting page of the design center. In that case, you will find the project navigator at the bottom here, and then you can just drag and drop drawings again. So to print it, to create a PDF in this specific case, I will use the file, print to PDF option and set up the details. First things first, I need to use a file name. I will save this to my desktop now. So it will be, uh, I don't know, layout one. And this will be an A3 paper in a landscape size, uh, landscape orientation. The content should be default, so it should be aligned to the original uh, landscape orientation. And the most important thing here, and that's why it's very tiny here, I do not need to further scale uh, my already scaled drawings on this layout. So I need to use the one to one scale factor and that will be correct. And after that, I can manually place the drawings wherever I wish, or I can just simply use the center, the plot option and click on apply or print to create the PDF file. If you do that, you, it will create a, a single page a PDF, but also if you use this tool here, um, this print queue, you can build up a print job list and you can create a multi-page PDF, which I did before. So let me just open that. And this is the final content with, the, with all the details uh, from the final version. And you can see that there is the second floor, the first floor, the second floor, uh, the sections, the elevations, and everything is collected in one single uh, PDF file. As you can see, this is the final stage of this project with all the details in it and this was used to create the print job uh, which created the multi-page PDF at the end. Let me show you how the print job looks like. You can go to file, print queue, and these are the PDF files collected in one single file, one single PDF file, and that's how it was generated by using the print button here. To work with terrains in Archline, you can use the terrain tools and you can build them up by, uh, point by point or you can also draft level lines if you wish. Or also you can use uh, imported files like point clouds that you can turn into terrains and also you can use DWG files to turn them into terrains. I will go with this last uh, example. I will load a DWG file using the file import and DWG option. I have saved a situation plan earlier, which I will now open and uh, use its original units in this specific case. Okay, and then place it on my drawing. Again, before I go on and work with it, I will at least check one length on it to test if the length is correct and I do not need to rescale the content. Now I am happy with this length. This is how it should be, so I will go on and I will create the terrain out of that. Uh, I will just enlarge this drawing. So what I will do, I will just track these lines. These are actually not only single lines, they are polylines in this uh, drawing. So I will use these polylines to recognize them and turn them into level lines based on the values that the original creator of this DWG file uh, highlighted here. 
So what I will do, I will use the terrain and create by points tool um, and I will select how I would like to define the points or the contour lines of this terrain. Now, because I already have it, have these content here, I do not start to draw them, but I will click on the by open chain and I will Op I will click on this open chain, this polyline, and the software will automatically recognize. Then in the appearing dialog, I should use the value that I see on the drawing, which is, uh, I think it's this value now. Yeah, it is. And then I will keep on going and just keep typing the following values the same way. So again, I just click on the control line, I type the value, that I wish to use and I hit OK. I click on the following one, I type the value and I hit OK. That's the thing, that's 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 how I do, that's how I repeat tracking these reference lines, uh, these level lines of this terrain. And then when I finish the final level line, I just hit OK and I hit enter to finish the command and I hit enter to close the side menu as well. So now I build the 3D by clicking here and then I organize my content so I can see the 3D drawing as well. It appears here with all the details uh, in it. I just changed the representation style from this uh, triangular uh, shape to something that I like better. It's here in the 3D representation in the local menu and I use contours and I think, I believe this represents it, uh, re represent it much better. Okay, so now let's just add a little bit more detail into it. Uh, I can also add something like a plateau. This is this here is a flat area which was already highlighted um, from by the designer with a hatch here. So I will add a plateau using the local menu. I can also use this tool here or I can just simply click here uh, on the terrain, on the terrain line and select the local menu and say I would like to create a plateau. Now again, I could just simply follow the contours of this hatched area, but it, but as it is already hatched, it is easy to select. So I just click on select item and I select this item. And as you can see, the software automatically recognized the contour. The original designer kindly reminded me that zero, where the plateau should be, is this value. So I just simply type that value here and I say OK and then I can set up the slope of the sides. Zero means vertical, uh, so I will just simply change it to 45 degree angle and I say OK. And now it's done over there, here in the 3D. Let me rotate it so you can see it better. It looks like that. And if I would like to make a few changes, like for example, I would like to change uh, the slope of these uh, parts here, I just simply right click there and select the modify slope on this side. If this comes up, it's a natural for this sort of shape. So I just say, okay, I click, I set up zero. Okay, and then I do the same here as well. This also should be zero, which in this specific case means vertical. And this should also mean, uh, this should also be zero. And when I'm done, I just hit enter and then it becomes vertical. So this way you can also change each and every sides of this plateau uh, changing the way it looks like. And after if you have something like for example walls that you would like to draft here or a complete building you would like to paste here you can do that. Let me represent that by simply creating a few walls here. I just use the wall tool single wall and then I just track the back of this area these uh, three sides of it and then when I'm done, as you can see, it is automatically represented somehow here at the bottom. And why is that? It's simply because the, the software does not understand yet that this should be the ground zero because I didn't tell so. So if I would like to change this, I just need to go to the floor management and tell the software that the building elevation zero should be at the same level as my plateau was. So I just click OK and then hit rebuild. So the software now understands where it should position the building parts on this uh, build, on this hill, on this uh, terrain. 
let me add a more uh, a few more details for example I would like to show you how to create building volumes so you don't need to completely design the, the surrounding buildings you can just simply use the this uh, building volume tool and quick track the contours of the surrounding buildings and then you can set up basic uh, settings for example the pitch of their roof on for example all sides uh, the front height this should be in my case 3000 millimeters and the topmost point which should be 8000 in my case and when I click OK I have a basic roof shape with a basic building uh, if I would like to change sides of this building I can say this is zero which again means uh, vertical and this is also zero which means vertical so I have something like that here and if I click OK the software will automatically generate it let me just quickly repeat it with another room shape uh, roof shape I'm um, sorry building shape I just click around here and set up the same details to make it easy for all sides okay so now I have two building shapes but obviously they also fall to the same ground because I did not tell them to be on a different level so they automatically adjust themselves to zero which is the plateau level now so what I need to do I can either select them and manually change their elevation or I can just use the vertical uh, arrow and move along that arrow and then just simply find the best point where it should match the top of the terrain and once it's done I am finished with that and I do the same thing here this should be somewhere there and then I'm done so uh, you can do it either manually by using uh, real life values that you measured on the spot so um, let me finish this uh, demonstration with a very useful tool which we call the solar access and this can be found in the visual design animation and it's called the solar access uh, the software will automatically warn me that this could be only used in the drawing mode so it will change the representation which I'm happy with and then I can set up the location of this building to any point of the globe which I will show you later in a later part of this uh, representation um, and also you can check the you can change the morning color you can check the uh, change the evening color to something else like this I think I will go with an, a nice orange and a blue I can also select I can also change the hatch properties this is how the fill uh, pattern will be uh, represented uh, in case of the shadow contours so I will just go here and I think I will select a solid pattern also I would like to see uh, hidden lines representation this is the day where I would like to check it from this R to this in 30 minutes steps and also if I would like to because uh, I did not set up for example I can change the north direction or at least I can see where it points to compared to the uh, original 2D drawing I just disabled this because now I would like to make the calculation for all the possible surfaces and I click OK so the software starts the calculation and once it's done I have this nice colorful uh, drawing with the morning represented as orange and the evening uh, represented as uh, blue and in between the 30 minute steps are represented so now I can see on, the, on that specific day this building does not cast any shadow on this part only its own terrain cast shadow here which is which is fine and also if I would have the building here I could determine if that building uh, costs any shadow on this building part let me demonstrate how to use the Google terrain database once you already have your building how to represent the surroundings uh, of your building using the Google terrain database uh, if you would like to do something like that first things uh, first you need to set up the geolocation of this building this can be several ways one uh, way of doing that is if, if you go to the file menu BIM and you click on the project parameters and next to the project location you click on this button and you select one from this uh, specified lo project location by option list 
um, and I'm just closing that and I'm going back to the uh, building part because there is also our Google Maps integration tool if you click there you can find a project location now this will directly drive you to the same menu and you can select the project location by Google Maps option for example and then you can determine the place of this building on earth Now that the map appeared, you can type the address here. This is uh, in Europe, so I will use an imaginary address. Uh, I mean, the address is real, just the building is not really there. And I just select uh, this and click hit enter to find the address. Now I click on satellite view to change the view to, so I can find the borders of the uh, of these areas here and then I move this into this property and this will be the corner of my building if I move this to the side you can see that on the original drawing I also have a coordinate this is the same thing here this is the project origin that I'm defining now and it appears here on the drawing. So if I hit OK, my job is done. I have set up the project location on Google Earth. Uh, and this project location, if you find it somewhere else on your drawing, you can simply relocate by using the tools, new origin and relocate project origin. So you can just simply click where you would like to place this project origin. Now that I have set up uh, the project origin and I also determined the north direction, you can just simply click here and set up the north direction. So now that I've, I've done these, I can just simply go to the Google Maps and I can either import the map as a flat image or I can import the map as a terrain. This is what I will do. I click on the map as a terrain. I will use a medium resolution, which is uh, perfect for most of the terrains if they are not that much uh, bumpy. And again, I need to zoom in and find the spot that I would like to uh, import because if I zoom in like this, this area will be imported. I can also change the representation again to satellite, refine my selection, and then just go and hit OK and the software will load this into my project. When the Google terrain appears uh, below my building, uh, sometimes uh, it's easy to lo lose the model. Well, actually the model is there, uh, just something has changed in my, in my uh, 3D model and, the, and what changed is that when I imported the uh, terrain, when I click here I can see that Google Maps already automatically determined the building elevation above sea level based on the selection of my um, reference point, the project origin. So because of that, uh, now the whole terrain is actually above my original camera so I need to move the camera above the terrain and then it appears automatically let me change the representation of this terrain to contours which is much better now and then I can study the building with its original surrounding now this satellite view will be only texture the buildings are not in 3D but if I would like to represent the 3D buildings that it themselves I can actually export this model into a KMZ file which I can do now and when I click yes the software will automatically export the model without the terrain because I actually do not need the terrain that's already part of the Google Maps uh, Google Earth um, uh, itself so I already did it so I just close this now and then I will load that model this is already saved on my computer 
the model I'm, up, I'm about to load is this model KMZ here. Uh, so before I already, uh, because I already saved, I just double click on it and it will automatically open up in Google Earth. The software will zoom into that area and find my building, which I just imported, and it will appear uh, with its surrounding if there is the 3D uh, data available in that area, which it is now here in this part of this uh, world. As you can see, the buildings are in 3D. And sometimes something like this could happen. And it's because um, several times when they redo the measurements, uh, perhaps because of the changes in the measurement accuracy or for some other reason, the terrain levels are not always at the same uh, level. So uh, I can see that now my building is halfway into the ground, which I can easily fix. Here at the left hand side, I can see this is my Archline XP place, which contains my project and if I right click here and I select properties I can change the altitude of this project now it is it is determined to be at this specific absolute level but if I click on clamp to ground then instead of uh, using a fixed value it will automatically snap it to the ground wherever I move it I can even actually move it to refine the position if I would like to match it to the to, to other parts of the ground so I can just simply refine it and when I hit OK it appears uh, correctly now with this um, here on the Google terrain uh, Google Earth uh, 3D globe When you use Archline XP for interior design, uh, you have several tools that you can go with. Uh, you can find all those tools and the most important tools at the left hand side in the toolbox. Now I will talk about one specific tool which helps you to quick furnish or quick design a room once you already have the walls and the slab. If you go to interior you can find a tool called Room Maker and with that you can click into a close contour of walls and then the software allows you to navigate from wall to wall to add details and to detail that wall in a way you want. For example on the first page these are the these are the several options the, the several pages of this room maker on the first page you can set up a sliding door or any, any different type of door you can you can go with you can select it you can customize it its width for example to 2100 and then you can add it to the wall and once it's there you can change its distance from the left side or from the right side by simply typing the value that you would like to use. The same applies for windows so for example if I would like to add a window here I just move on to the next page I select the window I can change its type or, or also its material and also when I'm done I change the width the height and when I add it there it exists here in the 3D space. So I just add new windows by simply adding this, uh, using this add new or create new button, this uh, green cross here. And then I prepare the properties again. I can see that it will be represented on this wall in front of me. And when I click create, the software will create it on the next possible empty space. So if I repeat it again, this area will be also filled with a window. If I would like to put them next to each other, I need to change their uh, distance from the side. So if I would like to change the distance here, I just change it to, I don't know, 1 to 50, 150. And when I click update, now it moves to the right. I do the same thing here. I just click on this one. I can say its distance from the right is the same. So I change it back to 150 and I click update. So now I have three windows next to each other. It, in, in front of each and every window, I can define a curtain, a so soft furnishing. There are different types that you can go with and uh, with different settings and also you can customize their material. And now I will go with a single hanging curtain uh, with a bottom height of 20 from the ground. And when I cre click create, the software will automatically create it. And then I can change its material, its fabric to whatever else I wish to. I do the same thing here. I just set up the settings. I use a different shape now with the same settings and I click create. So now I have 
two curtains and in front of three windows and I also have a door in this project. To go further I can also add uh, switches and sockets to the walls like I I think I will go with this two gang plate switch uh, in a distance from uh, right left I can change its distance from the left to be 300 so this distance will be 300 and the base offset will be 120 uh, 1200 when I create it appears here and its symbol appears automatically on the 2d also, if I would like to add decoration like cornices or skirting boards, I can do that. I just go with, this with the cornice or the, the skirting board option and I select the cross section that I would like to use. I customize its size, I customize its material. I think vanilla will be fine here and I click create so the software automatically creates it and it will break it down and it will break it apart where there is a door automatically. Also, I can add ceiling lamps, I can add wall lamps. Let's add two wall lamps next to the plate switch on this wall. I will select this lamp, uh, for example, this here. And I just go with the distance from the left hand side. This should be, I don't know, like a uh, thousand millimeters. I click create. And if I like the position, I can keep it. Or if I don't, I can just simply uh, changed its position either with this with these indicators here or by changing the distance from the left or change the base offset from the from the floor if I would like to add another one I just click create and I change the properties uh, to better represent what I want and then now I have these two lamps uh, if I would like to, I could also add paintings or posters or anything else to this wall. Let's select this for example here. I can change uh, whether it should have frame or matting. I can change the size and the base offset which I will change to uh, 1600 now. And I click create so it appears here. And finally, I can of course also change the floor. The software comes with built-in fabrics, built-in materials, built-in textures. So you can just simply go there and click and select any of those. You can go to the libraries of the software to find others. And also you can create your own. The same applies for the, for the walls. If, I, if you go there and you find a material uh, pattern that you like, you can use that. Uh, for example, I will use this, ha this hazelnut and I do not want to use it only on this wall but I would like to use it on all the walls so I click all walls, I click on this uh, material and it changes uh, the, the, the material all around. If I would like to import a texture from a certain manufacturer's website all I need to do is just to visit that manufacturer's website which I already did, it's that, that manufacturer here, the soul wallpaper I just go to product for example here on this page I select a certain product range and then I just start browsing their library. If I find something that I like then I can just simply right click on that image and click on save image as to save on my hard drive or I can even just simply copy on, uh, click on copy image and in that case this image was copied to the clipboard of Windows so now I can go back to ArchLine and I can click on this little star to create a new material. If I click on it, I can see the details of this material. I can set up the, the, the appearance and everything else. And here I can paste that pattern from the website and then I can name it anyhow. Let's, let's say this is wallpaper 0001, for example. I can save uh, it into a certain uh, category, I can change the subcategory, I can change the details how it's reflective or not. Uh, all these will matter, uh, matter when uh, I will create the rendered uh, images later. Also I can set up the size of this pattern. If I know the distance between these two points and these two points I can set up the material mapping size horizontally and vertically. And once that is created I hit OK and the software will change the fabric on all the walls because I have this option enabled. If I disable this option and I turn to another wall, for example to this wall inside, I can change this only by selecting a material pattern and 
if I like it, I can keep it. And in this case, the software will change only this material because I did not enable all walls. And now I have a feature wall here. If you click on close, the software will generate the 2D and the 3D as well. To have a better look in the 3D, I just open up the perspective view and I set up a top view from this model. I just set up my point of interest to this part, for example, and I move my camera inside the model. And I can also save this view. If I would like to create another view, I just refine the camera position and I add another view. So now I'm able to select between two existing uh, browse uh, in, in, in two existing views by just simply hitting OK and then I'm going that uh, into that view. If I would like to do the same in the 3D, I can just use these two arrows to navigate from one view to another. If you would like to furnish an interior like this, uh, you can use the built-in object libraries of Arshline, which you can find in the Design Center object catalog, uh, or you can also use the 3D Warehouse service to find something that you like. I think I will search for sofas now. If I find something, then I will download it. I can browse through the categories and check if there is something that I would like to import into my model. I think I will go with this lounge chair. If I click on it, I can check the details and I, I can click on download to use the latest uh, model matching my version of Archline. So I'm using SketchUp 2017 now. The software will automatically download this model and then you can select a surface to place a copy of that object uh, wherever you wish. You can also select the existing part and rotate it. I hit escape and then I will also download uh, an item from 3D Warehouse, this time using the toolbox interior object and 3D Warehouse. This is actually the same 3D Warehouse I used before and I will look for coffee tables. Again, if I can find something that I like, I just click on the image and it will appear in a large size. So now I can click on download, download this model, and I will use it in my design. Again, I just simply select the surface and move this table where I want. So now I have the 3D and I have the 2D content. I just make some refinement here to place this over there, for example. And again, I click here, I click on rotate to rotate this object into the to match better to this layout. There are several ways that you can do uh, when you are about to design a kitchen in Archline. Uh, first things first, there is this manufacturer tool uh, called the manufacturer items and there is the custom customized cabinet tool which allows you to design a cabinet one by one not just the dimensions also the doors the side panels the edges and the shape and also every other detail you can design one by one or, or also you can go to the libraries finding something that you like for this design that you're about to create now and then once you have found that, that item that you would like to place on your um, drawing, uh, then you can just click on it and select. Like For example, I will go with this small base cabinet. I click here, so the software loads it. I can change its size if I want, or I just click OK, and then I can place it on my drawing. If I click here, I can just align them next to each other and place other items everywhere else. I can click on the item itself and change its size to something else and change the details as well. Let me show you a few things how you can change the details. For example, if you have this unit here, you click on the item, 
go to the settings and for example if you would like to change the door itself then you can go to this door page this is the, the this is where you can define what sort of door you would like to have and you can just set up the style of door that you would like to use so if I would like to have this two-sided door I just click there and now the software uh, makes it appear if I click on an empty area the software will describe how to rotate the model or how to select items so I just hit OK and if I click hold my mouse in an empty area I can rotate it around so now this is how it looks like if I would like to change the divisions I can go to the first page to first open the, the door so I can see what's inside I totally open it and then now that I see the divisions I can go and change the divisions using the dividers page now I have one division in in this sort of uh, layout uh, or I can also use this here uh, by simply moving the division someplace else or I can also set up a distance if I would like to place this division 300 millimeters from the top I just change it like that and I click update and the software updates that the same way you can customize all details of this uh, furniture and now if you click OK the software will represent it opened as I have decided to open it if I would like to close it I just select it and click on the 3D representation option at the left hand side and totally close it. Now this project has another um, phase which I will load now and I will show you how a fully finished um, project looks like. But before I do that I will also show you how to create a countertop. So to create a countertop in Archline you can use the interior KBB countertop tool which when you start it you can select the units but as now I would like to create an L shape countertop and I do not have units here I will use the profile tool to click on the back of this countertop and design the countertop itself so once I have created it I just hit enter and the software will automatically uh, create it now if the height is not correct I can change it by using this value at the last page this should be in my case this should be 0.9 I click on refresh so the software moves it uh, above these units these units are from top to bottom 90, 900 millimeters also I can go and make other changes like the material for this worktop and also the size the thickness of this worktop I can decide how they join each other and also I can add other details like for example uh, a, a one and a half bowl sink if I select it I can click on create and then I can move it wherever I wish now it's it's aligned to the to this end I will change its distance from the right hand side one meter I click update and then if I like the position I keep it if I don't like it I can move it further to the side uh, to better represent it the way I want also the same thing I could do with a hub um, in that case again I can select in which side I would like to place the hub and then I can add it to the right hand side for example uh, by clicking on the hub itself and clicking create now I would like to move it to this side so again I just change this value click update and if I like that value I can keep it if I do not then I can just simply move it or I can manually type the correct distance let me show you a few more things in this fully finished final version of this kitchen now all the units are designed but sometimes I would like to represent this kitchen in a quite different way I'm about to show my clients how the internal parts of these units look like in, and in that case I just select the unit and all the units that I would like to change and then I go to the left hand side and select the 3D representation and change from closed to without fronts and now we can discuss what happens inside I can make changes together with the clients I can zoom in I can select the, the unit that I'm about to change go to the details do whatever I would like to change and then hit OK to, to make it appear 
And if I would like to go back to the original, I just select them again and go back and select totally closed. Now, sometimes I also would like to show them how these units uh, are operated. In that case, I use the slightly open face, when, which, which uh, only shows uh, a glimpse of how it works. It, it will not totally open the units as it would if I click on totally open. Uh, it only opens them slightly so uh, the clients could understand how this will work. And I can also highlight um, something that will be difficult to operate if they keep it that way. Uh, I will just simply select these items and I select uh, slightly open again to show how it works now.